All right, for Maryland, they've got three high flyers on their team, and for Creighton, they've got one superstar. Maryland is led by their Air Force, Gus, and here's the Air Force here. These guys are high flyers. 47 points a game among them on the average this year, and I'm telling you what, if you're going to ground them, and that's what Creighton wants to do, they're going to have to rely on Rodney Buford. Buford at 6 feet 5, inside quickness, cleverness, explosiveness characterize his game. He's also a very dangerous three-point shooter. They're going to rely on him heavily this afternoon. And a look at the starting lineups for Creighton in the backcourt. Walker and Sears with Swinson, Johnson, and Buford in the front court for Maryland. Stokes and Stevie Francis, Baxter, Morris, and LaRon Prophet. Dana Altman, the head coach of the Blue Jays from Creighton, fifth year, has improved the team's record five consecutive years, and he really gives his team a chance to win today. On the other side, Gary Williams. Tenth year at the University of Maryland, a three-time national coach of the season. And the profile for the Creighton Blue Jays, they're in Omaha, Nebraska, home of the College World Series, seen here on CBS. And they're in the Missouri Valley Conference, 6,200 students and a 22-8 and record. And the officials today, Bob Donato, Ed Hightower, and Tom Edies. Maryland and Creighton, and we're underway from the arena in Orlando, Florida. Gus, in the first round game, Maryland did an outstanding job passing the ball against Valpo's zone. Creighton opens up in his zone. And the Blue Jays forced the first turnover of the game. Ryan Sears, who's really good with the basketball. More steals than turnovers in two straight years. Maryland in the man-to-man -man defense, and, and there's Morris the steal. with the steal, and he's fouled going up court. Strip Swenson. And the Maryland players all signaling for an intentional foul. Maryland has set a team record for steals this year. They do a great job. Quick hands with the basketball. Swenson does all he can do to stop the easy basket. You can understand why the Maryland players thought that was an intentional foul. Looked like he was trying to tackle it. So Profit inbounding the ball to... Stokes, the senior from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Drop it in the corner. Some kind of zone being applied now by Creighton. Yes, it's actually sort of a box and one defense. They're guarding Steve Francis man to man. They're playing everybody else's zone. Back door, Francis cut off. Oh, what a pass! pass. Baxter slams it and draws the foul. How did he stay in bounds? <laughs> He has, this is a guy, Gus, with tremendous athletic ability. What great balance, and this takes some strength to stay in bounds here. Keeps his feet just long enough to get the great left-handed pass, and Baxter stepping right to the basket. And the free throw by Baxter, no good. Rebounded by Buford, Steve Francis, Jr. from Tacoma Park, Maryland. Lady Blair High School there in Maryland. Gus, you want to watch a matchup in the Maryland man-to-man. -man. It's Profit against Buford, and Profit knocks the ball away right there. Look for Creighton to set some screens down low to try to get Buford open. It's going to be very important for Maryland that they help on those screens. Buford, 2 of 13 in the first half of play, and the win over Louisville. Inside and a foul. Donnie Johnson fouled by Baxter. Gus Creighton is a team that shoots the three-point shot very, very well. On the year, they've made 229 threes, but early in the game, Dana Altman trying to establish something on the inside. Quick release, and it is good. Ben Walker, who had 16 points against Louisville, 12 in the second half, and a whistle and foul inside. Gus, I'll tell you what, if you're Creighton, you better not relax just because you made a three-point basket. If you're going to jog back on defense, you're going to find yourself taking the ball out of the net because Maryland, excellent in transition, and they will run even after made baskets. So Baxter, first free throw, good. Young man, a freshman. And he has seen his minutes extended with the injury to Obina Akizi, who blew out his Achilles tendon late in the season. Free throw, good. And Maryland gets into that full court press. Maryland pressures in a number of different ways. They can be very effective in the full court, but Walker at 200 pounds does a great job splitting that double team. Ryan Sears raked across the face, and looks like they may have gotten him on the bridge of the nose. And the foul is on LaRon Prophet. 
is first and the team's second. So Ben Walker putting things in motion. And a whistle and another foul. Right now, Maryland, Maryland a little too aggressive on the defensive end. Nereus Carlacanabas, the Lithuanian-born player, is fouled by Steve Francis. Sometimes Maryland can get into a situation where they do get overly aggressive and pick up the fouls. And what that does is causes them to back off the defense a little bit. And Gary Williams wants to avoid that. Johnson on the wing, guarded by Baxter. Walker. Stop and start, cut off nicely by Stokes. Alakonovis at seven points in the first half. Cross court, Buford 12 to shoot. Backs up, takes the three, Block. partially blocked. Maryland on the run. Profit across the lane, dumps it down, knocked away. Into the hands of Carla Conovis. Buford pull up three on the break. And that one's out of bounds. Actually hit the shot clock. Creighton is a team that runs up and down pretty well themselves. Averages 77 points a game. They're not afraid to get out and go, but I don't think that they want to get in a strictly transition game with Maryland today. Terrence Morris along with Stokes, Baxter, Prophet, and Steve Francis on the floor for the University of Maryland. Baxter really calling for the ball inside. He's working hard. Morris for three. Three, Morris. Morris has really had a nice NCAA tournament. 18 points with that smooth shooting in the first round game. Inside, Donnie Johnson got the step and he's fouled. And another foul against Maryland. The foul's starting to add up now for Gary Williams' Terps. And again, part of the problem with early fouls is that they tend to back off on the defensive pressure when they get in foul trouble. Great pass by Carla Conovis, and that's two fouls now against Lonnie Baxter. So Donnie Johnson at the free throw line. He's a junior from Omaha. Has been having some back problems, which has hindered his ability to really condition himself on the floor has to sit out a lot of practice and a substitution in the game Martisich replaces Baxter and he goes over to the sidelines and gets a little talking to him by the Maryland staff second free throw is good Jimmy Patsos the assistant coach over there talking to him Martisich looking for a guard Creighton with some pressure of their own. Creighton very successful with their pressure defense in the comeback against Louisville. Francis the lob! And the profit. Gus, we talked about the Air Force, and there's the Air Force, the high flyers from Maryland. It's tough to defend up in the stratosphere. Three-quarter court pressure by Maryland, broken easily by the Blue Jays. Maryland stays in the man-to-man. -man. Blue Jays looking to get Buford off early, guarded by Profit. Profit, good quickness. Carla Conovis shuffled his feet. Maryland is a team that also set a team record in assists, and one of the ways they get the assists in the most exciting fashion, just throw the ball up there, confident that LaRon Profit can come and get it, and from above the basket, LaRon Profit all you see is his hands in the ball. I love that camera. The <laughs> slam cam. <laughs> Steve Shear, our producer, and Larry Cavallina in the truck providing those great shots. Stokes. Morris. Bowling pass inside. Martisich short on the bank. Rebounded by Buford. Creighton is actually playing man-to-man -man against Maryland's post guy and man-to-man -man against Steve Francis. The other three guys playing zone, a triangle and two setup. Nice ball movement. Carla Conovis misses the reverse layup. Sneaky little move there. Used his hand to hook around Martisus. Three-pointer off the break by Profit. Long rebound. Goes to Justin Haynes. This is the kind of pace that Maryland would like to maintain. The up-and-down style. Creighton needs to slow it down a little. Here's Haynes. Guarded by Martisich. Almost stolen away as Morris taps it out of bounds. 15-49 to go. First half of play. Turks up 9-4.
Maryland up 9-4 in the first half of play. Now let's go to the third member of our team, Barry Booker. Thanks, Gus. The Blue Jays' leading scorer, Rodney Buford, didn't even start as a high school senior. He told me yesterday that he didn't have much confidence, and he was just a skinny kid, only about 180 pounds. But Coach Dana Altman offered him a scholarship after he lost another recruit. Today, Buford is poised to become Creighton's all-time leading scorer. Gus? All right, Barry, he needs eight points to become the all-time leading scorer. He's a four-time all Missouri Valley Conference player and only the third player in the 92 hi year history of the conference to do that. Ed McCauley did it for St. Louis 46 through 49. Here's Buford, jump stop, knocked out of bounds. Cleo Littleton did it for Wichita State 52 through 55. You checked Cleo, didn't you? <laughs> Don't start with me. <laughs> Carla Conovis up top, left-handed three. Rebounded by Haynes, who saved it into the hands of Sears. Just out-hustled Martisich for the ball. Brandon quick release. And Terrence Morris comes down with two. Four rebounds already for Morris. Francis has been quiet offensively. Whoa, look at the move down the lane, and it's touched. Held ball. Held ball, possession goes to the defense, and a, de a defensively initiated held ball, so the possession arrow won't change. Francis needs to be patient against this trick defense that Dana Altman's trying to employ. We said a triangle and two. They're guarding Maryland's post guy on the inside, and they're guarding Francis man-to-man. -man. The other three guys playing zone, just trying to disrupt that Maryland rhythm. And talk about this trick defense a little bit more from Creighton. Number 11, Doug Swenson. You have Steve Francis, who's such a focal point of the Maryland offense, does such a great job creating things. If you can prevent him from going where he wants to go, and once he gets the ball, if you've got somebody right on him man-to-man, -man, then if he tries to penetrate by, you have help right there. So it's almost like a double team all the time on Steve Francis when he gets into a danger zone for your defense. So it's a box and one, is that what they call it, Danny? A box and one is you're just guarding one guy man-to-man. -man. Creighton's actually guarding two guys man-to-man, -man, but it's uh, the inside post guy, Carla Conovis playing man, and the guy guarding Francis playing man. Juan Dixon, nice look, profit fouled underneath. You know, Rick Majerus used that same kind of defense last year against Arizona to beat him and head into the final four. Simon and uh, Bibby, he locked him down and played zone the rest of the way. Now, for complete tournament coverage with live scores, stats, and more, check out Tournament Live only at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportsline. One of Maryland's keys today, Gus, was to recognize the defense, to be patient against a boxing one or a trick defense. They anticipated that Creighton would do something like this today. And Maryland's been very successful. Gary Williams' troops, the way you beat that defense, Gus, is easy. You beat it down the court, and Maryland has been successful doing that today, getting down the court in transition. Walker picks up his first foul. Profit make it his second foul. Profit, and the free throw is good. 14-51 to go first half. Terps up 11-4. Now they press full court. Sears trapped, and Swinson just lets it fly in the press row. Third turnover for the Blue Jays. You get excited, you get going, you feel the pressure, and suddenly the pass that you were trying to throw six feet high, you throw ten feet high. Lob back door. Miller still with it. Blocked from behind by Swenson. And he saves it from going out of bounds. Gary Williams thinks it was a foul, but Swenson an outstanding shot blocker for Creighton. Walker, hesitation down the lane, off the glass, and it's good. That kid's a football player with the Creighton Blue Jays, a great football player growing up, recruited by a number of Big Ten schools. Meanwhile, Dixon with the jump shot. Dixon, a very dangerous shooter. Creighton actually going with a three-guard lineup right now, trying to handle the Maryland pressure, and there's a foul against Crawford. Walker is a young man at six feet two who's very powerful, and he uses that strength to get down inside his ability to beat you out on the perimeter. This guy's a former running back. Once he gets his head and shoulders by you, he knows how to find that hole. 
This is a guy, Gus, who played football because he thought it would help his strength and the quickness of his feet to help him play basketball. And was recruited by seven Big Ten schools to play football. And opted to play at Creighton. And he's from Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Sears and Brandon play catch. Now Walker, down the lane again, wraps it around. Wide open, Brandon, in and out. And Morris with the two-hand rebound. Maryland doing a great job on the boards thus far. Francis. And they throw it away. Fourth turnover for the Terrapins. 13-26 to go first half. They lead it 13-6. Gary Williams upset. And another turnover. Danny Miller. Crossing over, down the lane, right-hand roller is good, but an offensive foul. In this day and age, you're simply not going to be able to take the ball all the way to the basket when the defense is back. Pretty good transition defense. Sears just steps in. He's there in time, takes the charge. The jump stop and the shot or the jump stop and the pass are something that has to come back into transition basketball. Walker. On the sideline, skip pass, Brandon wide open, in and out again, he's been close, but he comes up with the steal. Corey Brandon, a senior from St. Louis. Now that's what you call following your shot. You follow the shot even after it's in the hands of the rebounder and take it. Ball taken away by Miller. He's got Martisic. Jump stop, this time he heard you, but it rattles out Martisic, rebound, and he's fouled. He heard you. He certainly doesn't want to get a second personal foul on a charge. Gary Williams to take his head off over there. But that's the kind of a play that you need to make. If you do that jump stop, even though he missed the, the a shot attempt, Martisic is running right next to him. He sees the seven-foot guy. You figure you got at least an even chance for a rebound with a seven-foot guy there. So Mike Martisic, seven-footer from Boston, Massachusetts. He's 225 pounds at the line. And the first is no good. Wholesale substitutions coming in for Creighton. Donnie Johnson, Carla Canavas, as well as Rodney Buford. And Buford has been quiet offensively so far, no points. And he's 0 for 3 from the field. Second free throw is good. 14-6, full court pressure once again by Maryland. Knocked out of bounds by Profit. How do you break this kind of press? You gotta keep the ball in the middle. Creighton only two made field goals and five turnovers and you can't play basketball that way against Maryland. Enter the ball quickly, try to get it up the middle of the court. If you put it on the side as they just did, you're gonna lose it. Francis inside, deals it off Profit, misses the chippy and out of bounds. That was one time when maybe Steve Francis should have shot the ball because LaRon Profit was stepping for the rebound and actually got hit in the nose. There's Profit underneath. And Sears with the rebound. In motion. Jump stop. Buford for three. It's short. Miller. Profit. He's got Dixon with him. Profit down the lane. And a loose ball on the baseline. Out of bounds. We head the other way. Neither team shooting the ball that well. Maryland 4 of 11, and Creighton 2 of 11. Rodney Buford is 0 for 4 from the field. He started 2 of 13 in the first round game. Here he is with the ball. Donnie Johnson across the lane, drops, step, got it, got it, and the foul. I think Donnie Johnson was very surprised that Martis is just standing in the middle of the lane. A fortunate break there for Creighton. Johnson comes into the lane now as he spins back. Never anticipated that Martisich would be standing there. Martisich did not get in good position. Johnson very enthusiastic after making that basket because Creighton has really been struggling to try to put points on the board. And a free throw for Donnie Johnson, no good. Neither team shooting free throws very well so far. Dixon, one dribble, pull up, jumper. And Donnie Johnson snacks it down. 
11.48 to go, first half of play, 14-8. Maryland likes to play in transition, but at the moment they may be going a little too fast out there. Sears. Artisich with the rebound. Francis in a hurry. Francis pull up jumper. Got his own rebound. And Creighton back into the 2-3 zone. Creighton transition defense has been pretty solid at forcing Maryland to take the jump shots rather than allowing layups. Creighton seated 10th. Maryland is a 2. Miller. And a foul. Creighton back in the box and one that time, not paying nearly as much attention to Martisich on the inside as they were to Baxter, who was out of the game with two personal fouls, but they're still guarding Steve Francis man-to-man. -man. Donnie Johnson, his second foul. And the free throw is good. Monday on CBS TV Guide says... Raymond Reigns. Find out why they're calling it the best season yet for Everybody Loves Raymond. Don't miss an all-new episode of The Funniest Show on TV, Monday, 9, 8 Central, right here on CBS. Second free throw is good. 11-13 to go, first half of play. Maryland up 16-8. The only thing better than finding oil is not finding oil still polluting that state 10 years after the Exxon Valdez. 60 Minutes, Sunday. will take you back to the Orlando Arena. Gus Johnson and Dan Bonner with more of Creighton against Maryland. 9.56 to go, first half of play. Maryland with their largest lead of the game, but Rodney Buford gets his first bucket of the game. Game thus far has been played at Maryland's pace. They're getting the ball up and down. The Terrapins haven't hit a lot of outside jumpers. Creighton's defense in transition has been able to force Maryland into those jump shots. Morris, quick turn, rebounded by Swenson with one hand. Strong rebound by him. It's because he was using the other hand to push Leron Profit away and got away with it. Swenson, senior from Holiday, North Dakota. Buford spins on the baseline, and he comes up short on the bank. And that's a freshman, Danny Miller, trying to guard a 2,000-point score. Let's see if Creighton is able to take advantage of that matchup. Straight away three from Morris, rolls out. He's missed two straight. Maryland is settling for three-point shots too early in the offensive possession. They can get that three-point shot anytime they want to. They need to get the ball down and see if they can get it inside. Swenson, pump fake, cross court, Carla Conovis. Now Buford. Walker. Walker. You know who this kid reminds me of? Remember Iowa State when they had Kenny Gregory? He was an undersized forward who could really get his shot off inside that's a real good comparison walker has the same kind of strength he's got real good quickness here's able to set the box in one again walker already with nine points gus four out of four 
And the game summary. Here in the first half of play, neither team shooting the ball very well. Each team with six turnovers. The key, however, has been Maryland's ability to get out on the fast break. Nine points on the fast break. That really has been the difference in the game. And Creighton over the limit, so Terrence Morris steps to the free throw line. Morris from Frederick, Maryland, only a sophomore. First one is good. First team all ACC. As a matter of fact, Maryland had two players on the first team for the ACC for those ACC honors Steve Francis and Morris last Maryland duo to achieve that Len Elmore and John Lucas back in the 70s and Len Elmore and John Lucas were a couple of very very good players for the University of Maryland inside Donnie Johnson all alone defensive yeah. breakdown for the Terps first time that Creighton has really been able to beat that Maryland pressure for an easy look at the basket Lob back door, Crockett couldn't lay it down. Brandon on the run, Sears blocks up for three, and he missed it. Donnie Johnson, offensive rebound, and he's fouled inside. Maryland has done a real good job on the defensive boards thus far in the game, but Donnie Johnson that time in transition, as we saw in our first game, Indiana and St. John's. It's awfully difficult to block out in transition. Baxter now picks up his third personal foul. So Donnie Johnson at the free throw line. Already with five points today. And two rebounds to boot. First one is good. And that's one thing this great team's very good at. Their free throw shooting, especially in the second half. In the last five minutes of their last five games, they actually made 37 of 39, so you cannot put these guys on the free throw line. They were 10 of 10 from the line in their first round matchup against Louisville in the last two minutes of the ball game. Morris to Stokes. Morris all alone. Stokes takes the three this time and hits. Three. Well, Terrell. Terrell Stokes makes it a 25-17 game. Maryland gets back into that press. This time the three-quarter court variety. Brandon, a lot of dribbling. Donnie Johnson, strong to the basket, stripped away, and he's fouled, he's by fouled again. And Ter Terrence Moore stuck his hand in there and then immediately put his hands behind his back <laughs> trying to get away with it. Good toughness by Creighton. Gary Williams wants to know why this isn't a walk, but the ball squeezes out of there and goes to Johnson, and Morris just reaches his hand in. And then right away, they're behind his back as if to tell the official, okay, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. So Donnie Johnson at the free throw line. He has six points. Eight kids, six points. Rare miss for Creighton. Number 32. Dana Altman very encouraged that his team is within eight points. They haven't really played very well offensively, but this is the pace that Maryland wants to play. They wonder if Creighton can play this pace for 40 minutes. Uh, one of Maryland's goals today is to try to wear Creighton down a little bit. Second one is good. 7.30 to go in the first half. 25-18 turns. 5-18 here in the first half of play and a look at the tournament summary. Number one seeds advance with ease. How about the number 10 seeds? And the Big Ten also playing extremely well. Big Ten with five out of eight thus far in the tournament, Gus, and it's very interesting. The SEC at 6-0 is impressive. Keep in mind, however, that five of those six SEC teams had the higher seeds. The Big Ten playing with some lower seeds but still able to win five games. Maryland with the basketball now, three-quarter court trap by Creighton inside, and the Terps turn it over. The Creighton defense with their box and one against Steve Francis has frustrated the Maryland offense a little bit. Seven turnovers now in the game. Now you say you want this ball in the middle of the floor. There it is. Nice look, Swenson is fouled hard by Martisic. If you bring the ball up the sidelines, you allow the sideline to act as another defender. One of the important things is Gary Williams calls the 22nd timeout. When you get the ball to the middle of the floor, you want to get it to somebody who knows what to do with it. Great pass by Karla Konovic. We'll look at some of the scores. Oklahoma State, Auburn, 4.30, 80 Eastern time. 
that one kicking off. And that is the big game, the Gonzaga-Stanford game. Gonzaga already with two victories this year over Pac-10 teams. Now Maryland, they have committed 10 team fouls, so from this point on with 7-13 remaining in the first half, Creighton shoots two free throws when they are fouled. Gary Williams' squad has just been a step slow with their pressure defense. They're getting a lot of those fouls in situations where they're going for the steal and banging somebody when it's just a, a second too late. Swenson, first free throw no good. The young man grew up working on the family farm back in Holiday, North Carolina, where they, North Dakota rather, where they raise cattle, corn, and wheat. And his mom, Ellen, and his dad, David. They need him on the farm, they say, but Parents, they don't want to stand in the way of his uh, dream of playing basketball and maybe moving on after his college career is over. They raised some big kids there on that farm. No question. And the second free throw is good. They're going to have to fatten him up a little bit. <laughs> He's 210 pounds. 25-19, Maryland leading Creighton. Miller weaves his way. Maryland has been content for the most part in the half court to settle for the outside shots. Again, the box and one against Francis. Francis down the lane. The runner is short. Rebounded by Carla Conovis. Francis in a little bit of a hurry trying to get that shot off before Walker shows up again. Walker's the guy who's guarding Francis in the box and one situation. Swenson posting up on Morris. Walker straight away three from downtown. Oh! Wow! Terrell Stokes had to battle through some screens. He's got 12 in the first half. Had 12 in the second half in the first round against Louisville. And the football player is showing he's got a nice jumper. These Creighton kids really feel like they have not been respected. There is another turnover as Swenson gets the tie up on the defensively initiated held ball. But the longer you let a team that's playing with a chip on its shoulder stay in the game, the more dangerous they get. Miller going to the basket. Swenson just all over the ball. That's a held ball initiated by the defense. It's a turnover. And Dana Altman's kids, their confidence is going to grow. Maryland trying to initiate the knockout punch early. Played a little bit too quickly. And now Creighton's back in the game. A steal by Francis. Maryland with the numbers. Prop it. Blocked by Buford. But Francis is there. What a great block by Buford. And then did you see that pass by Miller flipping it behind his head to Francis for the easy one? 27-22. Nice pace to this game. The ball, you just can't let them get out in transition. But Buford, what great reaction. And Miller, the quick little pass behind his head. These guys are such fun to watch. Buford's block takes him out of the play. He's not able to recover quickly enough to get back and challenge Francis. Danny Miller, who made that pass, a freshman from Mount Holly, New Jersey, who plays 13 minutes a game. So Buford at the line, and the free throw is good. And Buford is at the line because Maryland committed another one of those unnecessary fouls. Terrell Stokes pushing Buford with the body 40 feet away from the basket in a situation that wasn't really a good pressure situation. Buford is the nation's third leading active scorer he's the leading active scorer in the ncaa tournament second free throw is good and with 542 to go in the first half of play maryland up 27 24. maryland going with a smaller lineup on dixon the freshman from baltimore along with francis miller profit and terrence morris morris down the lane, Dixon spots up, count it. That is a good play by Terrence Morris as he dribbles into the middle of that box and one. The defense collapses around him, and Juan Dixon is a dangerous shooter. Brandon splitting the defense. Carla Conovas in the corner, and he ripped it. Lefty from Lithuania. When you give him time, he can really shoot the ball very well. Sort of a set shot. you got to get out and pressure him. They can put the ball on the floor. Miller, jump stop, great feed, and one. 
Young now, freshman really seeing the court well. Learned his lesson on that first charge that he got. Again, the jump stop and finds Morris. The defense comes, jump stop, comes straight down. The great pass to Terrence Morris. And Morris is a guy who knows where he can get his points, just drifts to the basket. In that box and one defense, the penetration can be a killer. Swenson comes over. Buford doesn't get down in time. Terrence Morris, 18 points, 10 rebounds, 3 assists in their win over Valpo. Free throw won't go, but it's knocked out of bounds by the, the Blue Jays. And Maryland with another chance, under 5 to play. Francis has to get it in, and he barely does. It's always interesting when you're the coach of the defense, you count one, two, three, four, five, and when you're the coach of the guy throwing it in, you count one, two, and so Francis finally did get it in. Morris blocked by Swenson, gets it back. Terrence Morris is a young man who has tremendous quickness at six feet nine. He's rather slightly built, and he has problems against big, strong guys, but Swenson only 210 pounds himself. Morris able to use his tremendous quickness and what great hands to get the ball out of that crowd and be able to convert. And the free throw is good. Does he remind you of another Maryland great guy named Joe Smith at all? <laughs> I would hate to put that kind of pressure on Terrence Morris, but he does have a game that's sort of similar. He's a much better outside shooter than Joe Smith. Francis with the rebound. Pushes it up the floor. Doesn't Francis. see the man behind. Miller for three. Francis oh there for the tip. He was all alone. Nobody boxed him out. When you're playing a box and one and he's the guy, how can you let him get to the basket without blocking him out? 36-27, Maryland on top. And Creighton's Dana Altman, despite the deficit, they feel that they can win this game. Well, I think the first thing we emphasize is this is not a seven-game series. We only got to beat them one time, and uh, you know it's going to take an extraordinary effort on our team's part. Uh, but I think we can do it. I, you know, I think our guys uh, for that one day can get up, and we can take some of their things away. And uh, if we keep the game close, you know, they'll feel some of the pressure down the stretch. They have had a very good effort thus far, and until that last Maryland spurt, they did have the game close and that's what Dana Altman's talking about but Maryland so explosive effort is not the only thing they're going to need to be able to score some points to keep in within hailing distance of Maryland Maryland with eight offensive rebounds today and they have 10 second chance points Creighton they have to block out and keep Maryland off the offensive glass Maryland did a great job on the offensive boards in their first round win against Valpo Buford missing the runner Still having problems getting on track offensively. Dixon trapped in the corner. 3.30 to go in the first half of play. 36-27 Terps. Now Creighton in their more conventional 1-2-2 or 3-2 zone defense. Inside Morris, he's fouled. And Morris suddenly has taken over the game on the interior. Maryland earlier was settling for those perimeter shots, and we said maybe they ought to go inside some more. Well, when you got a guy like Morris who's operating as effectively as he has been the last few minutes down on the inside, he's a guy you got to get the ball to. Third foul on Rodney Buford. And now Creighton has 10 team fouls, two shots for the Turks. And here are the statistics for Morris in round one, 18 points, 10 boards, three assists. And 8 for 15 from the field, and he's doing just as well today. Morris already with 13 points makes it 14. 321 to go in the first half, 38-27. In the South Region in Orlando, Florida. Maryland seated number two, taking on Creighton, a number 10. Creighton knocking off Louisville in the first round. An upset. Maryland having no problems with Valpo. They beat him 82 to 60. Maryland drops back into the half court pressure now. The Maryland pressure has been a factor over the last couple of minutes as Maryland stretched out this lead. Loose ball picked up by Francis. Miller. 
2.57 to go first half of play. Maryland with their largest lead of the game, up 38-27. And Creighton goes back to the box in one defense. It was the defense that they used effectively early in the game. Maryland, however, recently has generated some turnovers and stretched out the lead. There's Steve Francis. No call on the play. Picked up Miller on the baseline. No good. And that's why you play the box in one. You get to throw the ball over the defender who's guarding Francis man-to-man, -man, and you've got a 6'11 guy there to help. Brandon Walker, he's got 12 points in the first half. Pulls up for three. And into the hands of Francis. On the break, Dixon, jump stop for three. Got it! What a great job by Steve Francis to pitch that ball ahead. Lots of times you see kids take the ball to the middle and dribble it up the court, but you really put pressure on the defense when you get it to pitch it to the man ahead on the pass. And the freshman Dixon out of Baltimore, Maryland. He has seven points. Blake Calvert Hall. A bunch of talent from Baltimore in the tournament this year. Off the glass, Winston, no good. Stokes with the board. Lead pass, Dixon. He's got Francis with him. And it's broken up by Carla Conibus. Nice job by Creighton to get back. 41-27. Blue Jays need a basket. That's their guy. And it's knocked out of bounds. Maryland also playing the smaller lineup. Maryland on a 12-0 run currently. Donnie Johnson back into the game. And the bracket here in the South region in Orlando. St. John's destroying Indiana today. And they are waiting for the winner of this game. Creighton in Maryland. What a tremendous effort by St. John's today. Either one of these teams sitting there watching that game can't be confident about going up against St. John's. Not if they play like that. Alaconovus, 14 on the shot clock. Alaconovus leans in and banks it home. Alaconovus has been a big offensive factor for Creighton. Buford is really struggling. Creighton now back into that box and one. Five points for Carla Conibus. The Lithuanian-born player, Terrence Morris. Maryland's had good success when they've penetrated the box and one with the dribble or the pass. Backdoor, Morris! Great look from Profit. Francis over there got knocked down and actually set a screen while he was falling to the ground. Morris now with 16 points. In the first half of play, Carla Conibus guarded by Profit. Maryland's man-to-man -man has been pretty effective. Walker around the screen. Hesitation. Trapped inside. Taken away by Morris. And he fouls it. With 18 and 3 tenths of a second to go. And the game summary. Neither team shooting the ball very well. And both turning it over. But look at the fast break. Maryland with 16 to 4 advantage. And they're on a 14-2 run in the last five minutes. And it's those turnovers that really keyed the 14-2 run. Maryland has been able to take the turnovers and produce points from the turnovers. Creighton has not been able to do the same thing. Maryland also doing an outstanding job on the defensive board. So the Terrapins out and running both off turnovers and off defensive rebounds. So Morris, what a explosive first half he's had. Adds the second free throw, and Morris with 18 points in the first half of play. Exactly. Nine to shoot. Buford. Buford takes the shot and got it at the buzzer. Creighton has really struggled all afternoon long with their shooting, and particularly Rodney Buford. What a big lift, however, as he gets the open look from three-point range and drills it, cuts the lead to 13, but a big, big boost for Creighton. But Maryland went on a 16-5 run to end the half, and they lead it 45-32. to Now, coming up at halftime, Pennzoil at the half with Greg Gumbel and Clark Kellogg. Now let's go to Barry Booker, who moments ago spoke with Dana Altman. 
Coach Altman, what do you do in the second half? What adjustments do you make? Well, we got to get on the boards. We're getting killed. Uh, they out rebounding us 12 in that first half. And offensively, again, we're sped up like we were the other night against Louisville. We'll try to get them slowed down here. Roddy's got to hit some shots. Uh, we got to throw it inside a little bit more. We're casting up way too many threes. So hopefully we'll just calm down here a little bit and play a little better in the second half. All right, Gus Johnson with Dan Bonner. Your thoughts of the first half? I think Coach Oldman hit the nail right on the head. Uh, his team attempted 15 three-point shots in the first half. That's way too many, but Maryland tends to get you speeded up. All right, let's take a look at the uh, statistics from the first half of play. 27 to 15, Maryland out rebounding Creighton, and neither team shooting the ball well. Offensive rebounds, 10 for the Terps. And the two stars of this game, not really a big factor. Steve Francis, six points, six rebounds, but he's been locked in a box and one. But Rodney Buford, seven points. He has now tied the all-time scoring mark for Creighton. Needs one point to become the all-time leading scorer in the history of the school. Steve Francis has been locked up. They're guarding him in that box and one, but nonetheless, he's got six rebounds. He's got an assist. He's got a couple of steals. So Steve Francis doing the other thing. Lobbed inside, almost taken away. Now Ben Walker with 12 points in that first half of play. Walker. Feeding the post, Swenson poked away from behind. Maryland on the break, prop it, he's got Francis, but a reaching foul on Sears. Probably a wise foul. Absolutely a wise foul, going for the ball. He very nearly came up with the steal. Prophet was trying to get it back to Francis, but again, you see Steve Francis pitch it ahead on the fast break, and that really gets him going. Sears called for the foul, and that's his second. Maryland had real good success with their smaller lineup with Baxter out and Danny Miller in. Baxter back in to start the second half. Morris, quick release, and it's off the back of the rim. Rebounded inside by the freshman Baxter, and he lays it in. You heard Dana Altman say we're getting killed on the boards. Well, that's not the start Dana Altman wanted for the second half. 11 offensive rebounds for Maryland. Walker splits the defense, loses it. <laughs> Split the defense. He knocked the defense down. Uh, he's tailback. He's used to running over people. Sears saves it. Shot clock winding down to 10. Donnie Johnson knocked out of bounds, and he can't hold on. And that's the Maryland pressure. They may not have stolen the ball, but they had Creighton back on their heels that entire possession. Maryland really, really tough when they can pressure you. Inside Baxter again, and the little leaner. Looks like Baxter decided sitting over there on the bench with those foul problems that he wanted to play in this game. Lonnie Baxter from Silver Spring, Maryland, and Francis with the steal. Profit. Stokes. Francis inside. No call. Boy, Gary Williams is really angry about it. Stokes is usually the creator. He's not the finisher. Missed an easy layup. But Creighton's got to put some points on the board. Maryland just relentless defensively. And Rodney Buford really taken out of this basketball game. He really is not looking for his offense at all. Drop step, Swinson, out of bounds. Sometimes even as a, as a shooter or a scorer, you got to take some four shots every now and then to try to get yourself on track. Laurent Prophet is doing a great job against him, however, keeping him from getting the ball. There he gets it in a nice, quick shot. Buford now the all-time leading scorer at Creighton. And he surpasses Bob Harstad, who was the all-time leading scorer. 49 to 34. Terrapins. Stokes. Baxter in the corner. Steve Francis holding. 10 to shoot. Wheels. Francis kicks it down. Baxter wide open. How about that for Steve Francis? And you saw that great story on him during our pregame show on Steve Francis, his grandma interviewed. And he told me before the game, he said, Grandma, make sure you have that tuna casserole ready when we get back home. Buford with the jump shot. And he also said, Grandma, make sure you are not smoking while you watch this game. <laughs> Inside Baxter, he's feeling it right now. And Johnson fouls it. 
Buford, the all-time leading scorer at Creighton, he's a guy that's really got to get off and score the great spin move on the inside. Baxter going for the steal and not getting it. That's the kind of explosiveness inside that Buford possesses. Fourth foul on Baxter. 51 to 36. 17 minutes to go here in the second half play. Walker over the line. Everything is contested. Maryland doing a great job disrupting the Creighton offensive scheme. Crawford now matched up against Swenson. That's an interesting matchup. Morris the runner. Here's Stokes, rather Buford. Here's Stokes. Inside Morris. Baxter again. Morris keeping it alive out of bounds. Mike Martisich coming into the game as well as Car Carla Conovis for Creighton. Number 55. And Donnie Johnson takes Carla a seat. Return to the game. Carla Conovis had five points in the first half, but toward the end of the half, he didn't shoot the ball very much. And I think if Creighton's going to come back, Carla Conovis is the guy who can shoot it. He needs to look for that outside shot. And a foul called against Laurent Crockett on the wrist. Very hard when you've got a guy double teamed to not reach in there and slap the ball. Sunday on 60 Minutes in Alaska, the only thing better than finding oil is not finding oil still polluting the state 10 years after the Exxon Valdez. Sunday on 60 Minutes. Sears retreats into the backcourt. Hines Walker. Solid Conovis. Good look. And Francis in the open court. There he goes. Steve Francis foul. Gus, how about that? At full speed with guys all around you to take the ball behind his back to create the space that he can use to get down the court. This ball comes out of there behind the back. Walker trying to catch up, and the running back actually gets the foul. But Francis, a tremendous finisher. If he gets off on the fast break, he is very, very hard to stop. Steve Francis at the line, and in that story earlier today, Greg Gumbel told you how Steve Francis' his mom passed away. Brenda died when she was 39 years old, a heavy smoker. And Steve said his mom was sick for a very long time, lung cancer. There's his, his numbers. It's a first-round game against Valpo, and you can see what a well-rounded game that was, not only scoring, but also rebounding, assisting his teammates. This young man really has a complete basketball game that's played with a flair that you really have to see to believe. Not forcing anything, Steve Francis. He understands that his teammates can pick up the slack when his scoring isn't where he wants it to be. Double teamed on the sideline. Brandon, cross court pass. Buford goes baseline. Brandon wide open. Extra pass, Carla Conovis. Has to hit that shot. Stokes with the board. Stokes, the lob, Morris out of bounds. 15 47 to go, second half of play, 53 36. Maryland. 53 36 here in the second half of play. And in game one, it was all St. John's over Indiana. The kids from New York really moved the ball around extremely well, but they were led by their their old crafty guy, Tyrone Grant, who had 14 points and 12 rebounds. St. John's dismantles Indiana, 86-61, and the bracket here in the South Region in Orlando. St. John's winning, and they await the winner of this game. And Maryland keeps the pressure on. This pressure has really been good to Maryland, particularly after the first few minutes of the game. Francis picks it up to the basket. Whoa! What a move! And Francis hit in the mouth, is still on the baseline. He's very slow getting up. Carla Conovis and Morris with the rebound and Francis bleeding from the mouth. Gus, a tremendous move by Steve Francis. If you get him out in the open court and give him an opportunity to run, there are very few people in the country who are, can be as entertaining. Just, I mean, Sears practically sprains his ankles trying to keep staying in position. Just, just went right around Sears. I didn't see him get hit in the face, but 
I think Sears took a swipe at it. I think he may have a busted lip. Of course, the rule is that if you're bleeding, you have to go out of the game until the bleeding stops, and that's a traveling violation. Steve Francis on the bench right now. Number 44, and they are stitching that lip up or patching it up. And that's a tough one to get stopped. Left hand of Sears as he tries to stop Francis. Reaches by right there and gets him right in the face. So he said, uh, he told me to tell his grandma, Mabel, to make sure the tuna casserole is ready. He may not be able to eat it. Depends on what she has in that tuna casserole. It would be soft enough that he could. Uh, possibly. His favorite dish. Alaconibus drives and throws it out of bounds. Dana Altman was concerned at halftime that his team was playing too quickly, and I don't think that they've been able to get the pace where they want it. They're still playing very quickly, but Maryland's forcing that. Maryland up by 19, their biggest lead of the game. Profit inside, and Morris slashes to the hole. And according to Barry Booker, Steve Francis bit his tongue. Oh, my. It's very painful. It's hard to get the bleeding stopped as well, and you can't come back in the game if you're bleeding. Brandon. Alakonovas in the pivot. Johnson. Cut off on the baseline by Martisic and Donnie Johnson fouled by Terrell Stokes. Second foul on Stokes, third team foul called against the Terrapins. Ryan Sears inbounding on the baseline. Inside and an easy basket, Donnie Johnson. He Maryland. has nine. Maryland just lost track of him. Johnson, not a guy that scores a lot, just a little over four a game. Miller over the line. Stokes to the basket. Saves it from going out of bounds. And now he decides to run a play. Earlier in the game, in the first half, Maryland started playing much too quickly, and they look like they're in that accelerated tempo right now. Ball knocked away inside. Martisic Sears on the court. And a tie-up. And possession arrow favors Maryland. And this is a time where they will go to the possession arrow. Simultaneous possession. Maryland likes to play quickly, but sometimes they get in a gear that's just a little too high, and that seems to be the situation they're in right now. Creighton trying to apply the pressure, Creighton a good defensive team. And LaRon Prophet, he was the man on this Maryland team before Steve Francis arrived. And actually, they say his game has gotten better with the arrival of Steve Francis. Ball knocked out of bounds. That was a good attempt by Danny Miller. He was trying to knock the ball underneath to Morris. But LaRon Prophet, you're right, Gus. As a senior having to take a secondary role on the offense when you really wouldn't anticipate that, but Prophet, a team player, has really done a nice job. He's out here, he wants to win, and he doesn't care how it gets done. Buford, no good. Morris with the rebound. Lee pass. Miller, nice catch. Cuts across the lane. Miller! The freshman. Brandon the other way. Sears thought about the three. Buford and a whistle and foul. Maryland is a team that scores over 85 points a game, and you don't score that many points as running in, as well in transition unless you have a lot of guys who can finish plays. And Miller, the really nice ball handling, then the left-handed shot. So Buford inbounding the ball. He's got Walker with him, Donnie Johnson, Sears, and Brandon. Sears. Buford wants the ball. He knows he's got the freshman against him. Nice tip away by Martison. Creighton playing their three guard offense with Brandon Sears and Walker all in the game at the same time. Looking for some ball handling and some shooting. 15 to shoot. Buford crosses over. Nowhere to go. Brandon. Ball tipped into the hands of Martison. 
And it squirts out into the hands of Sears. Sears pull up three. Walker rebound, double pump, got it back. Inside, Johnny Johnson, five. A lot of bumping, grinding, and banging Dana Altman, inside. Dana Altman's troops only had three offensive rebounds in the first half, and they actually had more than three offensive rebounds on that particular sequence. However, they weren't able to convert. Now Johnson is going to have to get it done from the free throw line. Johnny Johnson really planned his heart out this afternoon. He's got nine points. Steve Francis back into the game. And Martisich takes a seat. He's given a nice little ovation by the fans here. Rooting for Maryland behind the Maryland bench. Maryland with that small lineup again. They were very, very good with this lineup in the first half. Second free throw good for Donnie Johnson. Timeout. Creighton. And it's a 20-second timeout. Now, Emmy Award winner John Larroquette returns to television as a Royal Payne, an innkeeper with the Natitude. Don't miss the series premiere of Payne Monday after Raymond on CBS. Mike Jarvis in attendance, his team cruised to victory today, 86-61 over Indiana. And how about Gary Williams in the NCAAs? Obviously, tremendous success in Maryland in the Sweet 16, 94, 95, 98. And if they get this win today, that'll be four times in the last six years for Gary Williams. And that is a pretty impressive record. Gary Williams at American Boston College, Ohio State. And now his alma mater, Maryland, where he did play basketball for the turf. Francis deals it down out of bounds. Creighton comes out in their zone defense, the 1-2-2 two, two look with Buford out at the top trying to trap, so they're out of the box and one again. Miller. Sixteen on the shot clock for Maryland. They're up 59-39. Don't often see the shot clock get down to 16 with this Maryland group. Profit, rise and fire. And Walker snatches it down. Sears, Swenson it all alone, and he lays it in. Nice look from Sears. Nice job by Swenson to run the court. Creighton really trying to pick up the defensive pressure. They feel that they are not out of this game yet. Morris who already has 20 points and 11 rebounds. His second consecutive double-double. Morris is a guy who came into the NCAA tournament not really playing very well, only shooting 30% from the field in his four games prior to the tournament, but boy, has he ever turned that around. Seven to shoot, Francis from the parking lot. Oh, my! Steve Francis makes it a 62-41 game. Hits that three and then telling Danny Miller to move up into position on the press. Maryland doesn't think this one is in the in the bucket. Francis. He <laughs> 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 can do it all. 62-41 turn.
Ben Walker, his fourth. Deep third. Number 44, Johnson, the last of the day. Fifty-nine remaining in the second half of play. Maryland up 62 to 46 and the game summary. Maryland again not shooting the ball very well but their defense has been very effective. Creighton hasn't shot the ball very well either. You can see Maryland 24 fast break points and that has really been the critical factor in this game. Maryland playing at the pace that they want and Creighton has been in a hurry all afternoon. Steve Francis, Stokes, Profit, Baxter and Miller on the court for Maryland in white. Here's Baxter, power dribble inside, and the freshman can't get it to go, but tips it up and in. Lonnie Baxter with 12 points, and I'm sure his high school coach at Anacostia, Thomas Hargrove, who's had some great ones there in Southeast D.C., is happy to watch the big fella play well here in Orlando. And Baxter replaced Avina Akizi, who went out with an Achilles injury late in the season. And most, on most teams, just that would be the end of it because Obina Akizi is starting center, a very effective inside player, but Baxter has stepped in nicely. And the other Maryland Terrapins have really picked up their game since Akizi went out. Good fundamentals. Baxter is acquired. Playing for Coach Hargrove at Anacostia High. And there's Obina Akizi. And that is a young man, Gus, when you talk about college athletics, that's a young man that already has one degree, is working on another degree. He's still got a future in professional basketball. Yesterday I was in the exercise room at the hotel, and he was in there working real hard, lifting weights. So be near Kesey. You were in the exercise room? I just walked by. <laughs> Profit inside, blocked by Johnson. Great play, tracked down, though, by Francis. But Abina Kesey is a young man that didn't put all his eggs in the professional basketball basket. He, as I say, has one degree, he's working on another one. Extremely bright young man. Profit, short baseline jumper, rebounded by Brandon on the air ball. Brandon to Sears, spots up for three. And Baxter with the one-hand rebound. Baxter really hasn't played that many minutes in this game, and he has done a fine job, particularly on the offensive end when he's been in there. He's got three rebounds to go along with those 12 points. Profit. Baxter. Off the glass, and he's fouled. And that's a very dangerous situation. Baxter concentrating on the shot and almost hurt himself. Not tonight on CBS. It's America's Heroes beginning with an all-new martial law with Sammo Hung in Arsenio Hall. Then from the producers of Walker, Texas Ranger, it's the next generation of justice, Sons of Thunder, with a special guest appearance by Chuck Norris tonight on CBS. Had a chance to meet Chuck Norris at the Olympics in Japan. So you're trying to get on dude. You're trying to get on that other show too. <laughs> there you've been well, you got me you've been trying to get on every show. You've been lobbying all CBS. weekend to be on Martial Law. Now well, you're trying that, to get on That's really my show. favorite show, though. I love that show. <laughs> Samo Hug and Arsenio. <laughs> Jackie Chan plus 50 pounds. And what's Arsenio? Gus Johnson minus 30 pounds? Oh, well, yeah, probably maybe 40. And Buford. And the great Blue Jays break it up. Here's the other way. Brandon in the corner, lefty jump shot. And he got the ball. <laughs> Not too many bounces have gone that well for Creighton. And they get into the full court pressure, down 65-49. A lot of time remaining here. Gus, plenty of time remaining. If they can get a couple of steals and hit some threes, they're right back in there. Morris, extra pass, and Baxter with the finish. 
do have a problem, though, trying to come back against a team like that, and there's Sears just not looking for the ball, and Car Carla Conovis throws it out of bounds. 15 points for Baxter, 67-49, Terps, 7.37 to go. Maryland up big in the south region from Orlando, and I'm here with one of the pioneers in intercollegiate athletics, Judy Rose, athletic director at UNCC Charlotte since 1990, and as of September, you will be the first woman on the NCAA Men's Division I Basketball Committee. Congratulations. Thank you. It's quite an honor. I'm real excited about serving. Uh, and what are you looking forward to about being part of the committee? Well, I think learning the ins and outs of, of how the 64 teams are selected, and I'm here shadowing one of the members this time, and also all the other things that the committee does, the evaluation of officials and who goes to the next round, and the evaluation of the sites of where the tournament's going to be played. Thanks very much for coming over. Back to you, Gus. And how about our 49ers? Big win against Rhode Island. They advance into the second round. Johnson with the basket, and they have a what an entertaining young team but one player in particular uh, Guevara who loves to shoot the three-pointer and blow kisses to his wife in the <laughs> stands I think that's amazing Diego Guevara meanwhile Donnie Johnson with 12 points and five rebounds and the 49ers of UNC Charlotte go they will go up against Oklahoma the big upset winner against Arizona yesterday Eduardo Nahara with the game winner for the Sooners. Ball stolen away, Brandon. Justin, there's still plenty of time left in this game. This one is not over yet. Brandon, double team. Stolen by Stokes. Maryland with numbers. Francis, travel. Kind of hot before he got into his move. One of the few mistakes we've seen Steve Francis make today in the transition game, Gary Williams, <laughs> not happy at the moment. He could be up by 100 and he'd have the same look on his face. Gary Williams is one of the most intense coaches you'll ever see. And I'll tell you what, when somebody makes a mistake on the court, the worst place to be is on the bench because he turns around and yells at everybody on the bench. Donnie Johnson blocked from behind, got it again, out of bounds, and Maryland receives it back. And the Creighton bench erupts. They thought there was a foul on the inside. Maryland, an excellent shot blocking team. Martisich does a nice job to prevent the easy basket. Miller comes from behind. Then Martisich with the block from behind. The ball goes off Johnson out of bounds. Miller, Francis, Stokes, Martisich, and Terrence Morris on the court. And now against the Creighton zone, that 1-2-2 two, two, or 3-2 zone. Inside, partially blocked, loose ball, and Buford comes up with it. And that's a shot you have to put away. Miller not being able to put that one away. And a reach-in foul on Steve Francis. Six and a 52. Now, if you're Creighton and you're Dana Altman, what are you telling your team as far as chipping down this score and time? I think, Gus, that what you have to do, the first, your first goal is to get the thing down under 10 points. And I think if you get the thing down under 10 points with about four and a half minutes to go, then you're in business for some kind of a stretch run. First free throw for Brandon is good. And a substitute coming in the game, Justin Haynes, a sophomore from Sterling, Nebraska. Creighton is in a situation, however, where they just about have to score on every possession, and they have to create some turnovers. Maryland done a pretty good job from the free throw line. Creighton has not helped themselves, unfortunately, from the line today. Second free throw is good, but they're whittling away at this Maryland lead. They get into the full court pressure. Stokes up the sideline. And right at the moment, Creighton chasing. Now Maryland going to set up the half-court offense. And a lot of folks feel that if Maryland has a weakness, playing in the half-court is the weakness. Francis looking for the ball inside. Nine to shoot. Inside Francis. Six to shoot. He's got to get it away. And the shot clock reset. The but shot, a steal. The shot clock should have reset because that pass hit the rim. Sears. Yeah. 
Drayton needs to get some movement on offense, and that's what Dana Altman is telling his team. Don't need to convert strictly three-point baskets, but you need to score. Carlitanovis for three. Buford goes up high. Oh, rebound. What a great rebound. And he can't stick it home. Jump ball, the call. And Creighton hangs on. Now let's check out the CBS Sports Line stat of the game. Three-point field goal shooting. Neither team with the stroke today. For complete tournament coverage, go to cbs.sportsline.com. 67 to 54. The Maryland defense has been very effective at pushing Creighton out to the perimeter, and the Blue Jays simply haven't been able to convert from the three-point line. Creighton, though, with the chance to make a mark here. All those stats don't mean anything right at this point. If you can get a couple of threes to go down, doesn't matter how you shot them before. Sears. Got the base for three. And we got a 10-point game. And just under five minutes to play, Creighton still has an opportunity. Creighton on a 16-5 run. They were down by as many as 13 in the first game against Louisville. And Gary Williams telling his team, let's go. He does not want them to play conservatively. He wants them to attack. That's where their best and Francis walks. And this is the same thing Louisville did in the first round. Got up big. And allowed Creighton to slow the tempo and come back little by little to tie it up and eventually take the lead. And with 4 and 36 to go in the second half, a 10-point game. Maryland, they've led by as many as 21. Close. And they have gotten it close. They haven't kept it close, Gus, but they've gotten it down to 10 with the opportunity to get under that double-digit lead. And Creighton only has four team fouls in this half, so they can afford to be extremely aggressive on the defensive end, trying to create the turnover. Maryland not scoring points. Buford off the front of the rim, and it's rebounded by Sears. Block. And oh, Francis. Francis went up high and got it. Ball knocked out of bounds, and Francis fouled from behind. However, at this point in the game, that's only team number five, team foul number five against Creighton. So Maryland not shooting. They'll simply get the ball out of bounds. Creighton had a couple of cracks at it. Maryland has 18 fouls. This is a Maryland team scored 45 points in the first half, but only has 22 thus far in this half. The Creighton defense much more effective in the second half. Morris inbounding to Baxter. And they get it to Stokes. Stokes, Francis, Morris, Baxter, Profit for Maryland in white. One of the big keys for Creighton has been that they've stopped the Maryland transition game. And they've been able to slow Maryland down. They've played with more confidence. Steve Francis looks at the clock down the lane. Oh, traveling. 20 turnovers for the Terps. Three fifty-two to go in the second half of play. Maryland up by 10. They've led by as many as 21. But Creighton, they've gone on a 16-4 run and have a chance to get it inside 10. When Maryland has played in transition, they stretched out the lead, but Creighton has stopped the Maryland transition game the last few minutes for this run. Sears pops out, quick release. Loose ball rebounded by Morris and a foul. And the bracket here in the South region in Orlando, St. John's demolishing Indiana today, 86-61. They will play the winner of this game between Maryland and Creighton at two versus a 10. And the game summary. Neither team shooting the ball very well. Maryland forced a lot of turnovers early, but lately they've been turning the ball over, and those fast break points, really the key to this game thus far. Baseball pass into the front court. Nice catch by Profit. And nice job by Creighton to get back and deny him the easy basket. So again, Creighton cuts off the fast break opportunity for Maryland, forces the Terps to play the half-court game. Morris back to Baxter, who's fouled. Nice little high-low look for Maryland. 
And Morris recognizing that the big fella was wide open. Of course, part of the problem when you get down by 23 points is the other guys just aren't going to stop playing. And Maryland, with some very potent offensive weapons, you figure eventually they're going to start to score again. Baxter, a 55% free throw shooter. The foul was on Buford. And the first one is short. Dane Altman said, if we can just keep it close, Maryland will feel the pressure at the end. And you wonder if maybe Baxter's feeling it a little. Second one good. 11-point lead for the Terrapins. And they get into the full-court pressure. They're gonna make Sears work to bring the ball up the floor. And throw it out of bounds. Justin, there's that turnover. The Maryland pressure has been one of the keys to this ball game. 18 turnovers now for Creighton. And even though Maryland not able to convert that into an easy basket, Creighton battling the clock just as much as Maryland now. Stokes tight roping the sideline. And he backs it up. Under three to play. The winner faces St. John's in the next round. Now Maryland needs to be disciplined, run the clock down, and get a good shot at the end of the shot clock period. Ten to shoot. Baxter. Oh, that's a tough pass. Morris across the lane. Pump fake. Scoop won't go. Francis with the rebound and a foul. And that's what great players, they do this. They get all the little things. Francis with the rebounds. Able to keep the ball in bounds. All those things that uh, the great players are able to do, this young man is doing it today. He has 12 rebounds today, Gus. They did a nice job, Creighton, that is, cutting off his offensive game in the first half, but he still has rebounded the ball very effectively. He has been a key in the Maryland pressure defense. And Walker fouls out. Ben Walker fouling out with 15 points. He leads the... Blue Jays in scoring today at 12 points in the first half. He is Rodney Buford's buddy from Milwaukee. Two of them play together in summer basketball. And Walker, the running back, the young man who played running back in football to make himself a better basketball player. How often do you see that? Not often. The Maryland Terrapins, uh, two guys with double-doubles today. Not only Francis, but Terrence Morris. One and one. Francis rubs the tattoo on his arm. His mom's name, Brenda, is on that tattoo. And he missed the free throw. Loose ball. Stokes. A what the play time by out. Stokes. 20-second timeout. A 20-second timeout. Uses his body very effectively to screen off Carla Conovis, gives him a little push, and then as he's fallen out of bounds on that one foot, calls the timeout. Now tonight on CBS, the LAPD's Dream Team hits the road to expose the mob, and Samo and Arsenio could get caught in the crunch. An all-new martial law tonight on CBS. And don't forget, coming up next, more great basketball action. Gonzaga and Stanford out west, Oklahoma State and Auburn, and Iowa and Arkansas. Desmond Mason, Adrian Peterson need big games for Oklahoma State if they're going to upset the number one seed, Auburn. Francis inbounding, and Dixon stepped on the line, but it wasn't called. Francis around the corner! Oh -ho! And a whistle and foul inside. And he got the foul call. <laughs> That's a break for Maryland. Swenson leaves with five points and five rebounds. And that particular drive to the basket by Francis just gave the impression that he's a little tired of the fact that Maryland's not converting here. He decided to take it himself and go. And into the ball game. Justin Haynes. And Steve Francis at the free throw line. Francis on the day. 13 points. A double double. Make it 14. He's got 12 rebounds also. Second one rims out, rebounded by Buford. 
still just a 12-point game. Couple of three-pointers, and this one tightens up. But that's a couple of things. Couple three-pointers is an awful lot to ask from Creighton. They have not shot the ball well from the three-point line all day. Here's Sears. Loose ball picked up inside by Laurent Profit. And it's very difficult to shoot the three-point shot at this part of the game because the defense knows that's the shot you want, so they're pushing out and putting a lot of pressure on it. Maryland working some clock and a foul. Foul number 12, the three Brandon is fourth first. Brandon with the foul and the game reset. Both teams over the limit. Two timeouts remaining for Creighton. One for Maryland. And Creighton also with the 20. So Profit at the line. Makes the first. Ron Profit. From Charleston, South Carolina. Played high school ball in Delaware. Third team all ACC. Second is good as well. 71-57. Brandon. Stolen by Francis. And a blocking foul on the baseline. He does all the intangible. He is so quick to the basketball, Gus. And he also has some great instincts for the game. He, he anticipates where the ball is going to go. And with his quickness, he can usually beat people to it. And a look at some of the upsets that have taken place in the first round. Creighton defeating Louisville. The Titans from Detroit over UCLA. Weaver stayed in Arsenal with the big game. And North Carolina goes down. Gonzaga and Minnesota. 32 points by Wisconsin. Not enough to beat Southwest Missouri State. Pretty good effort by Purdue against Texas. And looks like the run of the number 10 seeds may be over here, Gus. At least one of the number 10 seeds. Steve Francis. 15 points, 12 rebounds. Second one is up and good. 1.40 to go in the second half. 73-57 Maryland. The winner, they've got a date with the Johnnies. St. John's 86-61 winners today over Indiana. Buford for three. Short. Got his own rebound to the basket. Oh! What a play by Buford, but too little too late, and a foul. And Morris fouls him behind the three-point line. If you're going to go out, you may as well go out with a bang, and what a bang this is. Morris at six feet nine, and Buford just takes the ball and goes right to the basket. And Buford just takes the ball and goes right to the basket. Morris not able to get there until late, and he just hammers that baby. As 13 points, 73-59, a minute 14 to go in the second half. Time out on the floor. Oh, yeah. yeah, 73-59, Maryland leads Creighton, a minute 14 to go. Brandon is at the line, ready to shoot. And the first is good. Now here are the games coming up next. Stanford, Gonzaga, Oklahoma State, Auburn, Iowa, Arkansas. Two free throws good for Brandon, 73-61. Francis in the backboard with the ball fouled quickly. Foul for Ole Miss. And Ishimu Evans, Kentucky.